Lesson 1.12, Grouping Symbols. It's kind of important. You saw Lesson 1.10 and 1.11 when we talked about expressions. They're linked in the description if you need them. Grouping symbols tell us the order in which to perform operations. Expressions and equations may contain several operations. So the grouping symbols are parentheses, brackets, and braces. When an expression or equation has many grouping symbols, we begin with the innermost set and work to the outermost set. When a number is directly next to a grouping symbol or variable, we multiply. If we see 2 next to the parentheses with a 3 inside, that means 2 times 3. So when we see an expression like this, we begin with the innermost set of grouping symbols and work to the outermost set of grouping symbols. So in this case, we see parentheses. That's the innermost group of grouping symbols here. We're going to do our parentheses first, and 5 plus 4 is 9. So now our expression looks like this. Then we do within the brackets, these orange brackets, and 2 times 9 is 18. Now we do what's within the braces, and 20 minus 18 is 2. We have a 3 next to the grouping symbol. That means 3 times 2. It's equal to 6. We can use grouping symbols to write an expression that will represent the information in a word problem. Our grouping symbols will help us solve the expression in the correct order. We have, for three days, Emma ate two jelly beans in the morning and four jelly beans in the afternoon. Here's two in the morning, that's the a.m., and four in the afternoon, that's p.m. We add the two plus four to know how many she ate each day. And it says for three days, we multiply it by three. The three is right up next to the grouping symbol, that means multiply. Three times six is equal to 18 jelly beans in three days. When following the order of operations, we calculate within grouping symbols as the first step. The very first step in PEMDAS, the order of operations, is parentheses. We learned about the order of operations in video 1.11, which is linked into the description. But that first step may contain several steps, depending on the number of grouping symbols. That step, parentheses, includes parentheses, brackets, and braces in that order. You might want to take notes on this part unless you're already familiar. There are several methods to represent multiplication in algebra, and you're going to see these as you go up in from this grade to the next one to the next one. So remember a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount? Well, popular variables are x and n, and they're written in italics. That means they're written a little fancy, kind of looked a little script. And the x can be confused with the symbol x, for multiplication when not written carefully. And there are other methods to represent multiplication. So 2 times 5, that's written with the big X for multiplication. It can be written as a 2 with a floating dot and a 5. We can put the 2 in parentheses, or we could put the 5 in parentheses, or we could put them both in parentheses. If we have 2X times 5, you won't see it written like this. It's written as 2X with the floating dot and then the 5, or the 2x in parentheses, or the 5 in parentheses, or both in parentheses. And we just recently learned about powers of 10. We have 2 times 10 to the third power. You will see it written like this, especially when we get into scientific notation in the upcoming grades. Well, it can also be written with the floating dot between them, or with the 2 in parentheses, or with the 10 to the third power in parentheses. You might even see it with the 10 in parentheses with the three exponent on the outside up here. You might see both of them in parentheses with the exponent on the inside or both in parentheses with the exponent on the outside. So there's many different ways to represent multiplication, especially with exponents when we're dealing with algebra. So we can use a floating dot or grouping symbols directly next to a number to represent multiplication. If you see a two minus this, that doesn't count. There's a minus sign in between them. The number has to be directly next to the grouping symbol, whether it's a parentheses, a bracket, or a braces. And 
an expression can contain a floating dot and grouping symbols to represent multiplication. You might see both. Sophia's allowance is $10 per week. Bob's allowance is $8 per week. Every week, they each spend $5 on bus fare. Write a numerical expression to show how many weeks it will take them together to save enough money to buy their dog a bed for $24. So we think we know their weekly allowance and how much they spend on bus fare each week, how much is left over each week for them to save towards that dog bed. So Sophia has a $10 allowance and spends five on bus fare. Bob has an $8 allowance and spends five on bus fare. That means Sophia has $5 left over to save each week, and Bob has $3 left over to save each week. We add together the amount they've saved, and we know together they save $8 each week. If the bed costs $24, we divide the $24 by how much they save each week. We can see it'll take them three weeks to be able to buy the dog bed. First thing we do is find out how much each save in one week. That's each of them. Then we combine their weekly savings in the brackets. Then we divide the cost of the bed by their weekly savings and we know it'll take them three weeks. When evaluating an expression with different grouping symbols, we perform the operation in the innermost set of grouping symbols first. We evaluate the expression from inside out. We make sure to follow the order of operations. So we're going to do what is ever in parentheses or grouping symbols, and we'll do exponents next if there are any. Then we'll multiply or divide from left to right, whichever comes first, and then we'll add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. So we see a lot of grouping symbols. We're going to perform operations that inv are involving the parentheses. We have a 6 minus 3, that's a 3. We have a 4 plus 1, that's a 5. Now this is our new expression. Now we perform the operations involving the brackets. We have 3 times 2, which is 6. And we're going to add it to 5 times 3, which is 15. Now we perform the operations involving the braces. We have 6 plus 15 is 21. We multiply this 2 next to this brace as 42. 2 times 21 is equal to 42. So we know the answer is 42. We need to evaluate the expression and make sure to use the order of operations. We see a lot of grouping symbols, so we're going to start within the parentheses. We have 10 minus 8. That's going to be a 2. So that's 2 minus 2. Here we have 4 plus 2 in parentheses. That's 6. So we have 6 minus 6. 2 minus 2 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. Within the brackets is 0. That means we have 5 times 0. It's equal to 0. We start with the innermost grouping symbols first, the parentheses. Then we do the operations within the brackets. And then we do any operations within the braces. And we have our answer. Each day, Mrs. Kim bakes five dozen blueberry muffins. She cuts up four into sample pieces and sells the rest. And she bakes four dozen cranberry muffins. She cuts up two into sample pieces and sells the rest. What expression can we use to find how many blueberry and cranberry muffins she sells in one week? So we think if we can find how many she sells in one day, we can multiply that by seven for the week. And we can use our prior knowledge of a dozen and a week to write an expression. One dozen is equal to 12, and one week is seven days. We know she makes five dozen blueberry muffins. Well, one dozen is 12, so five would be five times 12. Then she cuts up four for sample pieces and sells the rest. So that's five times 12 minus four for the blueberries sold in one day. And the cranberry ones, she makes four dozen, and she gives away two, so that's four times 12 minus two. And the sum of the numbers within the braces represents the total amount of muffins for one day, the blueberry and cranberry. We, if that's one day, we need to know for one week, we multiply that times seven. 
So we can use this expression to find how many she sells in one week. Can we do this with mental math? We have 60 minus 4, that's 56, plus 48 minus 2, that's 46. So we have 56 and 46. We would add the 56 plus 46, that's equal to 102. We need to multiply that times 7 for the 7 days. That would be 714 muffins in one week. We're going to add an extra lesson 1.13 to this chapter. We're going to talk about exponents. When we were talking about the powers of 10, we had a little exponent by the 10. We're going to talk about exponents for any number. And I hope I'll see you there. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.